Roads are cracking open on Sicily because of the volcano Etna, guys. And there's a notable shallow seismic swarm that has been detected and it has produced that on its southern southeastern flank. So this is an area that is especially interesting because it has also produced earthquakes not right on top of the crater. And this is exactly the region between Tremestieri, Masca Lucia, Pedara and Nicolosi. You see this here on the map. And I'll get to it why this is so crucial. Because Etna has another problem that you do not see when you look at aerial pictures or when you write on Sicily. So generally speaking, this area is one of the most tectonically active or, and sensitive areas of the entire volcano. It's an area that is known for fault creep. And that could have resulted in the roads cracking. I've reported about creeping faults in California. It was It's pretty scary when you see how the sidewalk is all of a sudden not even anymore. And we also have rapid deformation in this area. And we have the long-term eastward sliding of Etna's flank towards the sea. I have reported about this. I'll put that video in the end screen because you should really watch this to understand what this is about. So right now, when we look at the earthquake map here, the question arises, what happened? What is happening with Etna? So the INGV, they have like they have the Vesuvius Observatory on land. They have the Observatorio at Neo, which is responsible for Etna. And it has first reported, reported three small earthquakes with magnitudes 2.6, 2.4, 2.3. For a volcano, it is quite significant because it tells us something's going on. And all of them were occurring at extremely shallow depth, just a few hundred meters. And as you can imagine, if you're an expert and watch my channel often, which I recommend, guys, by the way, leave it an early like and hype it if you can. And of course, subscribe. Um, you know that these earthquakes, despite being small, if they're so shallow, the shaking was clearly felt due to the superficial nature of the events. People felt it and it rattled them. But then shortly after, when the INGV updated the shake map of Etna, we had six additional events that appeared on the map with magnitudes between 1.5 and 2.0, so not micro seismic. And altogether, we're dealing with a sequence of nine earthquakes so far, and they were concentrated between Pedara, Tremestieri, and Mascalucia. Exactly a buff, a fault zone. The Trecastagni Tremestieri fault zone. One of the major structures that is controlling Etna's flank movement. And I mentioned it at the beginning, we have surface damage, as you see on the pictures here. The pavement of the road is significantly cracked. We have several pictures. So this is in actually in Tremestieri, um, very close to the epicenters of the earthquakes. New cracks in the asphalt, in sidewalks, and in front of the Madre Teresa di Calcutta school. So something like that going on at public buildings, especially if children are involved, we don't really want to see that. We don't like that because we see here on the pictures, these fractures are quite long and they're cutting through the pavement and through curbs. And especially the, since we know now that this is not random damage, guys. They mark the surface expression of the Tremestieri fault. That is a this is one segment of a long chain of faults that are basically cutting across Etna's southern and eastern flank. And these faults accommodate the volcano's ongoing eastward sliding towards the Ionian Sea. So you might ask the question, if, especially if you've seen my video about Etna has a crack and is sliding into the sea. And this, we can see this crack, but it's underwater. But it's dangerous because it can cause a devastating tsunami, not only for Sicily. 
but watch the video. It needs a lot of explanation. But the question is, are these earthquakes near the zone where Etna is sliding into the sea? Could that rattling cut something loose? Gosh, if you're a subscriber, you maybe have seen all these landslides videos in Alaska or even in Switzerland in the mountains. And if a mountain collapses or a part of a mountain like we have here in Etna, a huge part of the mountain, and it falls into a fjord or into the water, it can cause devastating, devastating consequences. So are these earthquakes near there? Yes, yes, this entire region. Tremestieri, Pedara, Mascalucia, Nicolosi lies directly along this unstable southeastern flank. The one that is slowly and permanently sliding towards the sea at a level of several centimeters per year. And slow sliding is not the problem, but we've seen it in Blatten. There's always the risk that it comes down at once. And then it is a problem. We've also seen it in Alaska this year, in the fjords. We have other problems in other fjords. So this is very, very dangerous. The eruptions at Mount Etna are not that dangerous compared to that, guys. So the specific fault that is activated in this swarm, I said it, it's the Trekastani Tremestieri fault, is one of the boundary faults that define and control the sliding block. We had a 4.9, magnitude 4.9 earthquake in 2018 that has ruptured a similar fault farther north, the Fiandaka fault. So crazy, right? We have the volcano, we thought that's it. And then now there's fault lines and there's another threat. So 2008, we had a magnitude 3.2 event that has produced similar surface cracks in the same Tremestieri area. And we have several studies that confirm an aseismic creep. That means the fault can slip without producing earthquakes. That increases surface cracking risk even during small earthquakes. And during this swarm that we're talking about right now, the INGV director has confirmed that the ground between the school and the provincial road deformed by about 1.5 centimeters. That's a significant value, guys, for such tiny earthquakes. Now you might have the question, and I'll give you the answer. Why can such tiny earthquakes cause so much damage? Two reasons. We have the extremely shallow depth. When quake only occur under, like at a depth below one kilometer, or below like a mile, two to 500 meters underground, the shaking at the surface is strong, even if the magnitude is low. And number two, we have the fault creep and we have a pre-stressed ground. Because the Tremestieri fault is already under tension from this flank sliding. So even small motions can propagate immediately to the surface. And that's what we're seeing here. And I don't know if you knew that, guys. This is why Etna's southeastern flank is globally known as one of the most deforming volcan volcanic slopes on Earth. And guys, I want to say something else because there's lots of fake AI videos going circulating around, um, um, proposed in your feed. Etna's falling apart. Etna exploded uh, with with hilarious thumbnails. I have to say this is all BS because I I read your comments and you're asking me what's going on with Etna. Did Etna break in two? Uh, no, it did not we have a substantial risk here. And unfortunately, and this seems to be, well, a new trend because I see it now, it's popping up everywhere. And there's recently been a report that 26 people owned 500 fake AI channels that copy real creators content, like my content. I've made this Etna video and they have copied it, copied my transcript and then, um, imploded with these ridiculous headlines 
and other BS. So whenever you hear an AI voice um, about this topic, geology topic, I haven't found a channel that is real yet. They're all BS. So be very, very careful what you listen to because a lot of that information is just not right. If they copy my video one-on-one, -on -one, then at least the content is right, but how they present it in the thumbnail and it's wrong. So, but yet still do not watch it. <laughs> these, these guys need to go. That needs to disappear because um, this is happening in all areas. It's filling YouTube with just junk garbage. But let's get back to Etna. Is this magma driven? That's also another question, right? Could we have the big explosion of Etna and then it's sliding into the sea, causing this massive tsunami? Well, whatever is rattling that unstable flank. And really watch the video in the end screen because there you see how this really looks and I'll explain this really to a great extent. I don't want to go that deep here. Uh, yes, this is likely magma driven indirectly. Three weeks earlier, we had a deep earthquake swarm that occurred on the western side of Etna. So Etna often shows this certain pattern, but we know Etna erupts quite often and it's lot, lots of tourist um, eruptions, tourists get too close, but we can't do anything about that, right? They are skiing there and hiking there with the lava. Um, so pattern that it shows. Deep intrusion in the west first, then second, mid-depth quakes that are migrating south then number three, we have shallow swarms in the southeast, which we have right now. And then we have the activation of local faults, Pedara, Tremestieri, Tricastani, Fiandaka. And then we have future possible swarms further east. So this is what we have to look out because this sequence matches exactly the current pattern. The volcano is currently in a normal deep magmatic recharge phase. So nothing here suggests an imminent eruption, but the tectonic system is being pressurized. This is what we're seeing here. And we should expect more earthquakes. Multiple volcanologists have noted that such patterns, it's common to see additional swarms on the eastern flank, probably in the coming weeks. Whether these will remain small or evolve, really that depends on the progress of the magma intrusion. But Etna is not the only volcano that is showing unrest. We have Volcano on Volcano. So that's an island that is named after a volcano and that is a complete volcano. I've reported about this previously. Since November 8, uh, 16th, we have eight shallow earthquakes that occurred below the Fossa 2 crater um, of Volcano and seven directly beneath the cone. And then another event occurred under Porto di Levante. So seismicity there has clearly increased over the last four weeks. And I will definitely keep you updated about that volcano as well. And the conclusion that I can give you relating the current earthquake swarm on Etna. We know the location directly along the falls that are controlling the eastward sliding flank. We have this measurable deformation of 1.5 centimeters. We have the activated part of the Tremestieri Tricastani fault. We have produced visible ground cracking. So it fits, fits well into a broader pattern of deep shallow magmatic recharge that we have observed since late October. These events are not unusual, but they occur in one of the most hazardous structural zones of Etna. And that's why we need to watch them closely. And I will keep you updated about this, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the videos in the end screen. Very, very interesting stuff. Campi Flegre is being rattled right now. Interstellar Object 3i Atlas. What is it? Very, very interesting. Anomaly after anomaly, mystery after mystery. New pictures every day, but the mystery remains. So I think you have a lot to watch. So stay here. I see you in a second.